Good afternoon, dear viewers of Divine Mercy Radio Television, and welcome once more to our weekly program every Friday, 3.30 to 4.30 p.m., where we journey with scriptures, the Word of God, and that is why our program is titled, Joining with the Word of God. That is our program, and all along we have been, we have been drilling you through the figures of speech in the Bible in a bit to help us to have a full comprehension and a better one. When, whenever we, are, we do encounter the Word of God, be it through private reading, or through community reading, or as well as the scriptures being explained to us by men of God, the priests, religious, and what have you. On this day, I am Father Alphonse, one day for presentation, and we have our usual resource person on my left here on set, who is Reverend Father George Ngomba. I will greet him. Good afternoon, Father, and welcome again to this edition, the fresh one for the month of June. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for this very first edition in the month of June. On the solemnity of the sacred heart of Jesus, I would like to wish all those out there a happy solemnity of the sacred heart of Jesus before we begin the program. Thank you so much, Father. We, we equally say you should remain glued to your screen for this one-hour program where you will not live in difference because each day, each time, each hour, we bring to you key things that will better our faith journey and more so each time we practice Lexio Divina as a community, small Christian community or gospel sharing group, or as a parish community, even. So we begin straight away. Last week, we did a figure of speech number 23, which read, on equal yoke. This time around, which is another new edition, we shall be focusing on the 24th figure of speech, which is right there on your screen, known as quotation. We know the word quotation, literally. But in this edition, Father will drill us on what is a quotation as a figure of speech we shall begin by looking at first and foremost the meaning of quotation then looking at some key examples of quotations as used in scriptures then the various uses of these quotations and we shall end with the kinds of quotation that shall be our first part thereafter we shall come to the second part where we'll focus solely on question and answer session further without much ado about nothing we'll begin straight away father as customer here on set by giving us the meaning of quotation as a figure of speech yes for that quotation normally is one of the easiest figure of speech in the bible we can define it as that figure of speech that uses exact words of another person or source usually with an indication of the origin the exact words of another person or source usually with an indication of the origin if you look at this particular definition the key elements here are, are that one it uses the exact words of another person or source this source here may be a book it may be a magazine it may be a journal secondly it indicates the origin where this particular quotation is coming from at times is indicated thirdly it is a citation of a well-known saying. It's something which people know, they have heard about it, they have read about it, and they know it very well. And it does not quote the author's name. It does not quote the author's name. That is the meaning of the key elements of quotation as a figure of speech in the Bible. Thank you so much by giving us uh, the definition that it is the exact words of another person or source. And uh, with this already this meaning, I, I will just end that way without give, repeating the words of Father anymore. If not, it will be repetition. We have already learned what is a quotation from the definition of Father. Yes, having told our read our viewers about this figure of speech, usually from a source, a book, or what have you, what could be some examples that are glaring in the Bible, in the Word of God, of this figure of speech known as a quotation, where we see words exact words of another person or source that is being quoted as far as i will begin with the old testament in proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 it says the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge now this quotation from proverbs is taken from psalms 111 verse 10 is not the proverb writer who imagined this, he quoted from Psalm 111 verse 10, which says, The fear of the Lord is a beginning of wisdom. So he replaced wisdom here with knowledge. 
That is a good example from the Old Testament. Then looking at the New Testament, I will take Matthew chapter 2 verse 15, which says, He stayed dead until the death of Herod, and so was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. He stayed there until the death of Herod. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 15. Here, Matthew quotes Hosea. It's from Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. So it's an Old Testament quotation that Matthew decided to quote in the New Testament. These are the two quotations that are very, very familiar with people who read the Bible, Father. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 is a figure of speech in the old testament known as quotation where it's not the real words that's coming from the book of proverb per se but being quoted already from the book of psalms psalms 111 verse 10. thank you so much father for giving us that before going to the uses of quotations as a figure of speech father i would like you to again come back to re-echo this definition simply put to give again to our viewers this definition of a quotation. Normally, when we say a quotation is true, we all know that it is citing here and citing here. But you give a very, very captivating definition, which I wanted to, re to, to, to repeat for the benefit of our viewers. It's true. It was done just once, just a second time, Father. So that I'll leave because when we are going further, they will, it's from time to time, it's good to give back that definition so that they do not lose track from what as we are making use of the definition from the various examples and uses and uses of that figure of speech so they, they just give again summarily put the definition of a quotation as a figure of speech father if, uh, if uh, a quotation as a figure of speech can be defined as the words or the phrases or sentences that are being quoted from a person or a source without bringing out the name of the person or the source okay that is it that is an exact word of another person or a source usually without bringing out the name of that person or that source that is the summary for a layman to have a better grasp of the meaning of figure of speech number 24 known as quotation thank you so much father george ngomba for coming back to that and i think now you viewer Viewers of the MRT be following us now live as we are beaming below the foot of Mount Farco. You already are already you already know what this figure of speech is all about. And with the examples that Father has given both from the New and Old Testament, you already see that sources are being quoted or persons without necessarily making reference to these persons or sources. Now, after having highlighted that Father, we we'll go to the third aspect, which is the uses. Of quotations how are they useful or how are they used in scripture what are the various uses or importance in other words of quotations in the scripture as father i'll give the seven basic uses of quotations in the bible the very first one is that quotations are used in the bible to cite or to refer to the old testament most of the quotations that we find in the Bible are found in the New Testament are actually quoted from the Old Testament. So the very first use is that it used to cite or refer to the Old Testament. The second use is that is to show the fulfillment of prophecy. Those Old Testament prophecies in the past that have been fulfilled in the New Testament, once you start reading them, you see how they are quoted first before they give you the importance of that particular prophecy. The third use is that they quote the words of the wise, such as Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Those wise people who actually spoke words of wisdom in the past, they are used in quotations to quote either in the New Testament or in the Old Testament and even include some pagan writers as such. The fourth is that is to show the continuity of God's revelation. God reveals to us not only in the time of the Old Testament, God continues to reveal to us in the New Testament, even now that we are talking. So one of the reasons of quotation is to actually show the continuity of God's revelation. Another, the fifth one is to show the authority of God's word. God's word is authoritative. It can't come to us without having an effect on us. 
So while it is shown in the Old Testament, the effect is seen equally in the New Testament and strongly in our daily lives. They are also used to communicate God's message in a clear and memorable way. Yes, to communicate God's message in a clear and honorable and memorable way, in such a way that we understand it clearly and at times we keep it in our memory for future use. Those are the six basic uses of quotations. Thank you so much, Father, for bringing out the six basic uses of quotation as a figure of speech in the Bible to refer to the Old Testament, show the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, quote words of the wise, show continuity of God's revelation, show authority of God's word, and to communicate God's message to the people. I think uh, one of such uh, quotations also, I think it's Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Father, mm -hmm. where Jesus Christ is quoting the Old Testament. You have heard how it was said of old, but I say to you, always quoting to, to the, the Old Testament, before Abraham was, I am. You're quoting some instances of the Eye, Ashe, Eye, that is, I am who I am in the Old Testament. Normally, when you look at this topic at the, mm -hmm. at the screen there, Father, mm -hmm. for those who are just tuning in here, you're on to journey with God's word, and that is figure of speech number 24 on your screen, which we are deliberating on or examining on this uh, life program here. Those just watching or somebody just tuning in into this channel will think that perhaps we say quotations, the person who wants to hear us giving quotations from Abraham Lincoln, our, our Barack Obama, or even in Sakaba, this film or that, this Nigerian movie, where you say, um, a river cannot go through the forest without bringing out trees, proverbs, and quotations, and so on. No, that is not what we are looking interested here. We are here with the word of God, and quotations from this perspective are somewhat different, although having an inclination to that, but from the point of view of being quoting being being quoted from the point of view of the bible which refers to a source or a person without necessarily mentioning the name of that person that's a small uh, clarification i wanted to bring father because some people will see especially those who love proverbs and quotations they may be following us now that we to see if father will give us many quotations as many as such or even those of pentecostal uh, or other denominations that will see if they'll quote by uh, uh, phrases in the scriptures today no at the end we shall quote them because we always come with our memory verse at the end of this program thank you so much for that that's the, the bit of input that i wanted to add there now regarding the us we have seen the meaning we have seen various examples or two one from the old the other from the new then six uses of quotations we shall end the first part looking at the various kinds of quotations in the bible normally first of all you should know that uses are different from kinds Kinds are somewhat similar to types. So we are here with kinds of quotations. Father, take us along. Yes, Father, the very first one which I will give preference to is uh, quotations from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is actually the sanctifier and the quotations of the Holy Spirit, it goes alongside with the manner in which these quotations are brought out in the Old Testament and now the Holy Spirit quotes them inside the new testament we we'll begin with mark chapter 7 mark chapter 12 verse 36 mark chapter 12 verse 36 david himself said by the holy spirit this was the introduction to a quotation from psalm 110 david himself said by the holy spirit this was the introduction to a quotation from psalm 110 10 verse 1. Then Matthew chapter 14 verse 4 says, referring to Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, our Lord says, Go, God commanded you, saying, but I, I, will, I will simplify it. Yes. The quotation from the Holy Spirit, one is from Mark chapter 12 verse 36. David himself said by the Holy Spirit, this was an introduction to a quotation from psalm 110 verse 1 this is a quotation from the holy spirit the introduction psalm 110 verse 1 and secondly matthew chapter 14 verse 4 referring to exodus chapter 20 verse 12 our lord says god commanded saying the holy spirit is talking here using david as a mouthpiece 
The Holy Spirit is only talking here, using Moses as a mouthpiece, referring to situations where the Lord is talking directly. Okay. Yes. I thank you so much, Father, for giving us that uh, various kinds. If there are no, if there are still some to add, Father will add. Then we will conclude the very first part. Thank you for giving us the very first kind of uh, quotation. That is quotation to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The second. Uh, yes, Father. The second we call them introductory quotations. Okay. Introductory quotations simply means that they normally stand at the beginning of sentences or passages. The Old Testament passages are introduced in various ways. It stands written. That's one way. It stands written. You see it in Matthew chapter 4, 4 to 10, and in Luke chapter 4, verse 8. It stands written. That is the first one. The second one is, for scripture says, for scripture says, it's an introduction quotation. And the third one, the law says, these are the three basic introduction quotations. It stands written for the scripture says and the law says ko ama adonai <laughs> thus says the lord thank you so much father for giving us uh, this another second uh, figure of speech the second kind of figure of speech known as quotation in the bible which is introductory quotation simply because they do introduce a particular text for instance it stands written and more often than not most gospel passages when they praise or the deacon go to read it always begin some sort of with an introductory quotation at that time okay. jesus said at that time okay. so that is an introductory quotation which when a priest will be reading you will not just look at it from that perspective but having gone through this program or this edition today you already know that that is a figure of speech number 24 being used there known as quotation introductory quotation a kind of quotation then the third father the third we call them quotations from the old testament it means that they are all found in the new testament but they are quoted now from they are all found in the new testament but they are quoted from the old testament we have matthew chapter 1 verse 23 matthew chapter 1 verse 23 it states yes. behold a virgin shall have a child and shall call his name emmanuel Isaiah. It, yeah. So Matthew is quoting from Isaiah, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and will give birth to a son I will call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 23. Matthew is quoting from Isaiah chapter 7, That's verse nine. 14. Okay, yes. Nine yeah, nine 14. 14. So mm -hmm. it's a quotation from the Old Testament quoted in the New Testament. The New Testament. And it was being fulfilled when Jesus was born. But it was fulfilled twice eh, for them. <laughs> in the Old Testament, many virgins conceived. <laughs> but that one was true. Yeah, a natural means. Yeah, natural Literal means you. of sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. But now, the ultimate, let me say, the, the, the apex of this fulfillment came when Virgin Mary conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. So some, you see some prophecies that have, been, that have been fulfilled more than once, like this one. But the ultimate one, came in the new testament time when jesus was born now we also have um what we call um a, another quotation coming from matthew chapter 2 verse 5 out of egypt have i called my son which agrees with the hebrew of hosea chapter 1 verse 11 hosea chapter 1 11 quoted this saying in the old testament times then now Matthew chapter 2 verse 5 brought it out again. Out of Egypt I have called my son. So it was quoted by Isaiah in 11 verse 1 and now it's been fulfilled in Matthew chapter 2 verse 5 Out of Egypt I have called my son. Those are some Definitely. of the examples of quotation from the Old Testament. Thank you so much Father for giving us the various kinds of quotations free in number to the Holy Spirit introductory quotations and quotations from the old testaments just now before we get to the second phase of this session we thank father already for giving us the meaning of quotation as a figure of speech various examples in both the old and new testaments various uses of quotations in the bible and lastly which there were six of them in number and now the three kinds of quotations that we have thank you also dear viewers for staying tuned and before we go for our brief break 
to have a let's we'll have a breather with uh, uh with our with Jesse Agun who is at the technique at the broadcasting units there to give us a brief musical piece that will help us digest already this first part further so that when we come back we'll go into the question and answer session and equally to say that the the second and answer the second phase that shall be question and answer session will be the moment for you to now bring your questions as per the topic of this discussion which you have on your screen either questions for clarification comments remarks and what have you but do not call and when you send the questions and the remarks for clarifications or comments do not forget to pen down your name and where you are writing from thank you so agum jesse give us this breather while we come back for the second phase for question and answer session still with father george ngomba thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome back. If you are just tuning in on the Divine Mercy Radio Television and the program that is life now is Journey with God's Word. The topic of discussion all along has and is on your screen figure of speech number 24, known as quotation. Now, Father, we have come, we are back into the second phase, which shall be the question and answer session, and is the moment for our viewers, those who have been following you and us all along. So now send their questions and you can do that dear viewers from the numbers you find on your screen normal sms we will have it here and it shall be welcomed whatsapp still will equally afford to have that 
and it shall be welcomed off of facebook and other social media platforms so that we while we get the questions here we'll know where you are asking the question from who you are and further straight away will give a brief concise and succinct response to that particular question why are waiting our viewers to send the ask father we we'll always we'll always begin with what we have why are waiting for that consideration or preoccupations to come from those watching us live as we are here on set the very first question here which reads father that how many express citations it means that the person is using a synonym of the word quotation perhaps how many express citations of the old testament are in the new testament remember when you're talking about the third kind of uh, quotation which is that quotations from the old testament mentioning isaiah 7 14 which is found in matthew uh, in matthew in matthew's gospel that behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son who you must name jesus or emmanuel as you quoted the quote in matthew 123 which is being that quoted from the old testament isaiah 7 14 i think somebody is asking this question now how many of them citations of the old testament are found or being quoted in the new testament uh, Father, before i answer the question i would like to say that um, this question is very very specific in the sense that this questionnaire as such is asking for the number of express quotations of the old testament in the new testament and not from other sources like you have some pagan quotations from pagan sources you have others from um, quotations that are coming out from uh, other personalities outside the bible we have about 243 quotations from the old testament that we find inside the new testament and this number is not let me say something stable but um, we talk about express quotations there are some which are there but they are not expressed but the express ones are 243 father thank you so much father says there are 243 expressions that are ex the, the express citations of the old testament that are found in the new 243 and that already tells us that the whole word of god the bible is a whole to be read as an entity as one unit from the point of view that the old testament some sort of prefigures the new and the new a manifestation of fulfillment of the old to show as per the dogmatic constitution of the church the verbum paragraph 16 which i love quoting so much god who is the inspirer and author of both testaments will that the old be uh, that the new be hidden in the old and the old be made manifest in the new thank you so much father for giving us the number which shows us that it is an a one 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 single unit so we should not read one in isolation but the old should be read in the light of the new and the new which also needs better understanding to also have some sort of glimpse of that which happened in the old the old testament alone will be wanting the new testament alone will be wanting but the old and the new that is what made the scriptures the word of god which we all are journeying with during this program we'll go to the second question father which is which book in the new testament has no quotation at all but makes allusions to the old testament text without necessarily having this figure of speech like having quotations but making allusions to old testament text as far as out of uh, 27 books we find in the new testament the book of revelation stand out as the only book that does not make quotations or use quotations from the old testament they make allusions in many areas that uh, uh added to the book but does not quote directly or the indirectly either but can make allusions in the sense of bringing out the message but not quoting them either it's a book of revelation thank you so much father father is telling us all that the that particular book that does not necessarily quote the old testament but make allusions to old testament texts is the book of revelations perhaps and before we round off, Father will give us perhaps an example to better illustrate this point that the book of Revelation is one of those or the lone book, if I dare say, that makes use or make allusions of the Old Testament text without necessarily having that, it as quotations, as a figure of speech in that particular book which ends the Bible or ends the New Testament. At the end, Father, we may give us one example or two. 
if he wishes to better illustrate that point so that we should see indeed that it simply makes allusion to old testament text without necessarily uh, having quotations therein as a figure of speech the third year father is how can a christian detect a message of god in the old testament used in the new testament that how can a christian or a lady or even anybody anyone how can someone detect a message of god in the old testament used in the new testament basically three phrases are used when you are reading the bible and you see this particular clause the scripture says the scripture says it means that a quotation is coming or god says quotation from the holy spirit god says it means that a quotation is coming and thirdly that it might be fulfilled that it might be fulfilled so the scripture says god says that it might be fulfilled these are the three things that you can know if a message in the old testament is used in the new testament yes father has given us the three things that we can easily observe to know if a message in the old testament is used in the new testament Adonai, thus says the lord and that it may be fulfilled christ said all this so that it may be fulfilled when you look at those sentences phrases or words you, you immediately know that you can easily you can you immediately detect the message of god in the old testament that is being used in the new testament you have heard how it was said do not do this do not do that that's exodus that jesus christ is quoting but i tell you not abolishing the law of course but fulfilling that law the next question here father is are there other names remember when we, we spoke about the figure of speech known as uh, uh rhetorical question mm -hmm. we also talk about erotesis so we spoke about erotesis as a figure of speech in the scripture which had another name as uh, questions that do not necessarily need an answer or rhetorical question so perhaps also there could be other names given to quotation as a figure of speech in the bible are there yes for, uh, there are many but i'll give the best one from just greek and latin we know that um latin latin and greek are languages that were used to actually write the bible to beside hebrew and aramaic and greek we have what we call the greek name nomi 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 is similar to quotation in fact it comes from knowledge understanding and it means knowing so the greek term for quotation is known as nomi the latin is called sentencia when you see nomi when you see sentencia just know that these are synonyms of the english word quotation thank you so much father has given the various synonyms of the word quotation and i won't go into it to repeat that but just to continue with the questions which we have here on set yes uh, just to encourage us still to, who are uh, who are sending questions here via the number you find on your screen it is joining with god's word and we should make the word of god indeed food because it is there where we are nourished at the table of the word before being before leading us to the table of the eucharist so we should not joke with the word because it is a soul of theology as mentioned in the new ratio fundamentalist nationalist thank you so much uh, i think number 65 if my memory doesn't fail me now we are on to the next question here father is there any difference between a quotation as a figure of speech and that use in normal language remember um as i said you say i have a dream as the king barack obama came and said i am the dream you quote other people john bt man is essentially religious or a religious being uh we talk about emmanuel levinas man is uh, a relational being and that are, those are all authors now somebody's asking here is there any difference between quotation as a figure of speech in the bible and that which is used in normal 
English language. Therefore, I would like to make an analysis of the Venn diagram used in mathematics. For example, if the universal set is called um, quotation, set A may just be biblical quotations, set B may just be quotations from stories, set C may just be quotations from persons or authors. So generally, biblical quotations are just one small part of quotations found in that universal set, set A. Maybe set B from authors, set C may come from different books that may not only may be secular books. So actually, the definition of quotation found in the dictionary envelops all types of quotations in the world. Why quotations as figures of speech are based basically on biblical text, which at times may still be quoted from those other sources, but with the intention of bringing out God's revelation, with the intention of using it for our salvation, for our own personal holiness and edification. So while quotations from the Bible just form a subset of the universal set of core quotations, they are actually directed towards fulfilling God's revelation and for our salvation. So biblical quotations are just a subset of the universal quotations. Thank you so much, Father. I think those watching us with that from class six, those writing commentaries and first school, they'll just be smiling that I answer that question well. Father is taking us back to our Venn diagram sub subset into a larger set, as well as those even who are writing in the in secondary schools, not forgetting the whole concept of Venn diagrams in mathematics or in arithmetic. Thank you so much. So biblical quotations basically put as Father has told us and you, the beloved viewers, is simply a subset, one kind, one type. Whereas there are other kinds of quotations which we have. And that lead us, leads us to the next question in which we have here. That father, yes, I want to know if, uh, how can, uh, somebody wants to know how the person can do to interpret a quotation. Are there a set of rules? How can we really interpret? How can one interpret quotation as a figure of speech when he's faced with a particular text also? As far as the context in which that particular quotation is taken from is very, very important because normally every interpretation must go with context. The second element is that that particular quotation must have what we call a historical reference. Okay. Where, in which part of the history in the Bible Yes. That particular quotation is actually used for. Thirdly, that particular area of quotation must also have the objective, the aim. What is this quotation trying to achieve at the end? And lastly, is this quotation actually for personal growth, the growth of a church, or for the growth of the world. You must have these four elements intact. Okay. There are four key elements which Father have stated to help us to better to be to be to being capable of interpreting a quotation as a figure of speech in the Bible. Dear viewers, yes, we have we have had about four or five questions just now and we have some few minutes left at our disposal. It is still uh, an opportunity for you to send not just questions but as i always say even comments or remarks or contributions as per the topic so that we all may grow in knowledge of the word of god and keep journeying with god's word every day of our life because the word of god is alive and active it cuts more finely than any double-edged sword those who usually go for lectionary procession always sing this or this particular uh, which is a scriptural text of course always sing it to carry the word of god to bring to the minister to, to 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 show that word of god to the people and to bless them with the word of god it is indeed power and we stand on that word of god as our own source or our own nourishment to also feed our souls which leads us to the table of the eucharist father we have been talking about quotation i think for some people they may not know the thin difference that exists between a quotation and a proverb. Why do I say so? In this film, Ashes to Ashes, 
don't ask if I'm so versed with Nigerian movies. I'm not a movie type, but at least why growing up uh, as a young person, we normally watch those movies, Ashes to Ashes, which is a, a vigilante group in Nigeria where crime wave was so high. And because of that, they, they had to institute vigilante groups to be capable of curbing some of such of those some of those practices. And with that, the, the Nigerian movie industry had to act or to play act that particular uh, in action which they did to remedy high thievery, the level of thievery in the particular community. And they acted one there's the Sakaba and there's another one Ashes to Ashes. I will end with Ashes. I will begin with Ashes to Ashes, not end with it, because there is this person known as Sam Sam Didi. And he was like the leader of the of the of the group, and uh, he's always good at I don't know I don't know now if it's quotations or proverbs because he say a river does not go through the forest without bringing down trees. Why saying this? He meant that the big people who have brought them to the village should do their job so that the level of thievery or the high crime rate should come to an end. They should know that when it will come, if if it's their children that are perpetrators of this. They should know that they'll also go down. That's why I said the river cannot go through the forest without bringing down trees. Now, those watching us now, Father, they may not know if this is this a quotation or is it a proverb. So that leads us to the next question here. How is a quotation different from a proverb? <laughs> hey, Father, I'll add something to what you have just said. I read somewhere else that uh, people who live in glass houses should not throw stones. <laughs> uh, people who live in glass houses should not throw stones. Exactly. Father, what you have quoted is a proverb. Okay. And what I have quoted is equally a proverb. A proverb. Okay. Yes. Now, you realize that these are proverbs or wise sayings. And all proverbs are quotations. Okay. But not all quotations are proverbs. Are proverbs. Yes. In the, in the biblical sayings, you hear a reading from the book of Proverbs. Just know that these are quotations from different sources. These are wise sayings from different sources. But... He withdrew his son from Egypt. It's a quotation, but it's not a proverb. So the difference is that why all proverbs are quotations, not all quotations are proverbs. <laughs> that is the simple meaning. Thank you so much. Father has has given us a different a difference between quotations and proverbs. What I quoted is a proverb. What he did quote. Is indeed a proverb, and being a proverb means it's automatically a quotation. A river cannot go down through the forest without bringing down trees, or those who live in glass houses do not throw stones at others. These are all proverbs, but at the same time, quotations for all proverbs are quotations. That's what Father has told us, but not all quotations are proverbs. I think that is how Father has given a difference between quotation and a proverb. The last question year before we we shall be rounding off read father how can you differentiate a quotation from metaphors and similes this is this, this were the very first three uh figures of speech, speech. we did at the yeah. beginning we did metaphors simile personification and the rest so for the father was somebody you have differentiated between a quotation and a proverb fine now it is between a quotation the facility between from a quotation from metaphors and similes father when we did um metaphors and similes remember we actually talked about comparing two, two things, things and using the words as and like, and like oh, yes right father. while with quotations they don't compare things okay with quotations they don't use like and as right while mm -hmm. metaphors and similes they use these words like and as which are not found inside quotations. So that is how you differentiate the two. Why a quotation actually brings out uh, a spiritual truth without using like and as and without bringing out comparisons. Realize that metaphors and similes, they use like and as and they use comparisons. Thank you so much, Father. Those who have written ordinary level uh, <laughs> literature, I don't know if the paper is still to come or it will come. Father has given you already a definition of a simile or metaphor which you normally find in ordinary level literature as well as even advanced level. I don't know, I did not do that in high school, but at least I did it at the ordinary level, Father. That a simile is a com comparing two things with the use, two or more things with the use of like and as, whereas metaphors comparing two things without the use of 
like an ass and father has differentiated between quote, quotation from these things first of all there is no comparison in the case of a simile in the case of a metaphor sorry and in the case of the simile there is no like and as being used there thank you so much father with that i think with that we are almost getting to the end of our program every week journey with god's word if there are no other contributions coming from those watching us live from far and near i think we shall be cutting the t's and dotting the i's here on set so as to round off and give room for other programs coming up father so as is customary here on set, on set beloved viewers of divine mercy radio television we always end firstly with a last word from father george ngoma who is parish priest of christ the king parish move there in tico as well as the memory verse or a quotation which i will give <laughs> not from that stairs but a quotation which i will give well, that will indeed give a spiritual truth to us after that quotation which is a memory verse then we shall quit the stage for us to continue having a beautiful weekend with zmr tv so father your last word to our viewers yes father i want to call our attention to the fact that tomorrow we are celebrating the memorial of the immaculate heart of mary and holy mother church actually puts the Together. feast of the sacred heart of jesus and immaculate of mary within 24 hours for us to ponder more uh, how our own heart should be the light of the sacred heart light out of the immaculate heart even when a soul pierce your own heart too you take it as mary did and we should love as the sacred heart loved that is my message to the people of god yes father is giving his last words to us all as we journey especially this weekend that we should love as christ love by trying to make our hearts image that of the sacred heart and to image that of the immaculate heart the sacred of jesus and the immaculate heart of the blessed virgin mary let love lead and if our hearts are somewhat similar to theirs i think peace will be in our land no longer wars no longer hatred but if our hearts go b far away from imaging the earth then there will be wars then there will be hatred and no peace let us indeed as we commemorate this solemnity today of sacred heart and tomorrow of the immaculate heart of the blessed virgin mary make our hearts pray that god may make our hearts to be likened or to even just a little I think it will change society somehow father and uh, to conclude we have here our memory verse of the day which is i will begin and i'll give two today father proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom proverb chapter 1 verse 7 then the second for us all since this one from the old testament i will take the new and the second memory verse from the new testament is matthew chapter 1 verse 23 behold the virgin will conceive and bear a son whom you will name jesus behold the virgin will conceive and bear a son whom you will name emmanuel so we know proverb 1 7 the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and we have matthew 1 23 behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son who will be named Emmanuel, which means, of course, God with us. So those are two quotations, two memory verses that will help us as we journey this weekend. Once more, thank you, Father George Ngoba, for being here, always in time to dish your knowledge to the people of God, as well as to feed them as we all journey with this with this word of God. And to so thank you, beloved viewers, we take our rendezvous. I have been your host, Father Alphonse Wongi Bay Fonyoy, and we take rendezvous next friday next friday same time same venue from 3 30 to 4 30 still on journey with god's word with another figure of speech we shall be the 25th thank you have a wonderful weekend and remain glued to zmr tv for up next we shall have issues with mirabel have a joy-filled weekend with family and relations